At one years old, my biological father abandoned me. My mother happened to find another man in her life. This guy was, was not a good man. And uh, he was very abusive, and he abused us in every way possible, everything from sexual, mental, physical, and even spiritual abuse. And then at six and a half, I was abandoned by my mother. And at that point, I went into state custody and, and started living in hospitals and homes and different places. And, and um, so I spent a lot of time uh, feeling worthless, powerless, feeling like there was just no hope for my life. Uh, before the age of 16, I had 12 documented attempts at suicide. Every father figure that came into my life would be there for maybe two minutes and then they were gone because it was like, whoa, this kid's, <laughs> this kid's got problems. And so it was just constantly just being given up on and just not having somebody there for me. I had one person who decided to stay there, who decided to keep showing up. And he kept showing up with a basketball. He didn't ask me about my childhood. He didn't ask me all these deep questions about you know, where I came from. He just simply played basketball with me and taught me how to play basketball. And through that relationship, I started opening up to him and started talking to him and started kind of having a father in all reality where he just cared about me and he loved me. And we used that piece of leather, that basketball, to create a bond and a, and a friendship. And that spirit, like a whole different transformation inside of me that said, wow, if this one person thinks I'm worthy, then maybe I am worthy. And so what else do I have? What other kind of potential do I have in my life? Mit 15 wurde Wes ins High School Basketball Team aufgenommen und spielte drei Jahre für sein Team. Nach der Schule wurde er erfolgreicher Unternehmer. Inzwischen ist er verheiratet mit zwei Kindern und einem guten Verdienst. Aber trotzdem fehlt was in seinem Leben. The entrepreneur world is fantastic and I love it, but I'm missing a core of who I am. I want to give back to as many people as I possibly can. Two years ago, I founded a company, a nonprofit called The Human Project. Wes and I were business partners and um, just kind of been working together and had you know good camaraderie to begin with. And, and he invited me to be on the board of directors for Human Project. And uh, because I'm a youth pastor, a father, and you know I, I love kids and my heart is for those who have a broken heart, really. And Human Project's entire mission is to teach children how to empower themselves, how to live their dreams, and to achieve accomplishments, regardless of their circumstances, whatever they're living through. The Human Project versucht, Jugendliche zu erreichen, die in der Schule, zu Hause oder sonst wie im Leben Schwierigkeiten haben und keine Anlaufstelle finden, darüber zu reden. Jugendliche erreichen das Human Project über ihre Webseite, Facebook oder Twitter. Aber das Herz des Human Projects sind kleine Unterstützerclubs, wie hier in einer High School, wo Schüler sich aussprechen können. All they really need is somebody to just come sit with them. Like you don't have to know anything, you don't have to have the right words, you don't have to have the right skills. And instead of seeing the, the piercings and the, the dark makeup and the hoodie and whatever else, you know, whatever the kids are doing to hide themselves and hide the pain. And just say, hey, I see you. I know you're there and just spend a moment with them. The person knows that, wow, this person cares for me. You know, the, the number one thing is just to be there you know, for these youth. Hunter, uh, one of the youth that was in the program, asked if he could talk to me privately. He'd been in and out of homeless shelters since we met him. And he started outlining a story to me about how he was going to be spending his holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas, in a graveyard. He had nowhere to go. I was homeless and it was because my dad quit his job and he just stopped paying the child support so I had nowhere else to go and me and my mom were stuck out on the streets in between couches and places like that. And we just started making the calls. We started uh, raising money. Uh, we got him an apartment, we got him a place to live, we got him hooked up with schools, we got the community to rally around and donate furniture. Um, I just saw the light go on inside of him. Like there was, it was like this dim little candle that was hidden because that was safe. And you could see that light get brighter and brighter and brighter. And honestly, you wouldn't think that he was ever had any problems at all. I mean, he seems like a normal kid now. Before the Human Project, I felt kind of hopeless that I was not going to go anywhere, that I was just going to be some nobody just sitting there on a the street, not doing anything, not with an education and without anything. And that's what it comes down to, is you don't know what your time is worth until you use it. And we all say our time is valuable. Well, what are we using it for? Schon erstaunlich, was ein Stück Leder und ein paar Stunden Zeit erwirken können.